Hi, virtual students. Uh, this is just a little preamble to your factor label video, and I'll be doing this in class with kids. And uh, you're just going to watch this one first, and then the other factor label video second. The second factor label video is for AP Kids. It's meant as a review, and it's kind of fast-paced. So I just wanted to do a little intro with you before you jump into it. Factor label is a powerful, powerful tool for solving problems. You can use it in algebra class, and you'll use it in any science class you take in college. It really helps you to solve problems. I know there will be a few of you out there who like feel you could do the problem some other way that's more familiar, and you're going to resist. Don't resist. It'll help you so much in the long run. So let's just get to it. So the factor label method, basically, we treat units just like numbers. So you know how if you take uh, 2 times 1 half, you can just cancel out these 2's and get 1. We're going to do the same sort of thing with units. We're going to get rid of units by canceling out units that are on the top and the bottom. So, for instance, if I had 36 inches, and I wanted to know how many feet that was, I'm sure you already know the answer, but just bear with me here. What I want to do is get rid of the inches. And to get rid of the inches, I'm going to put inches in the denominator of my factor. And then I want to be left with feet, so I'm going to put feet on the top of my factor. So now I know I'm going to get the right units on my answer. Now I just have to figure out what numbers go with feet in inches. And this is kind of weird, but you know, 12 inches is equal to 1 foot. And when the top and the bottom of something are equal in a fraction, you're basically multiplying by 1. So you can do that whenever you want to. It's not going to hurt anything. 12 inches is equal to 1 foot. So then I'm going to cancel my units. And just the units don't cancel the numbers. My inches are gone, and I'm going to end up with feet. If you're using this in algebra class on a word problem where you don't really know how to do it, this should reassure you right at this point, oh, I'm getting the right unit, I must be doing the right math. It's a nice check for yourself. If the units are working out right, you're probably doing it right. So in this case, it's going to be 36 times 1 12th. You guys, I wouldn't even enter that in my calculator. I would just, you know, in my head, multiply across the top. 36 times 1 is 36. And then divide by the bottom, 12. So 36 divided by 12 is 3. So I had two sig figs in my initial number here. And you might be thinking that the 1 foot in 12 inches and 1 foot has only one sig fig. But you know what? We're not saying, oh, there's about 12 inches in about one foot. Actually, what we're saying is in exactly one foot, there are exactly 12 inches. And when we're being exact like that, you know, if we wanted to write it out with the right number of sig figs, it would be like 1.000000000 feet. And nobody wants to write O's forever. It's an exact number. Those O's go on forever. So we don't write it down, and it's just understood that it's exact. For most of our problems, you can just look at the given number, which is the first number. It's the number given to you in the problem. Count up the sig figs there and round your answer to that many sig figs. So if I need two sig figs in my answer, I'm going to make this 3.0. Okay, you guys, I think you should try a little problem. So here we go. There are 12.5 clogos in one zippy do uh, How many? Zippy-doos are in 
250 clothos. So one thing that students get a little bit confused on here is which number should they start with. So you want to start with the number that you are trying to convert. So this is actually a conversion factor. This is going to be your fraction. And you want to start with this number. Pause here and try to figure it out on your own. I hope you got this answer. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, I really didn't need to do that funky factor label thing to get that answer, Mrs. Keep. So uh, let's try a slightly harder problem where it makes more sense to use factor label. So here's a slightly harder problem. We want to go from 30 miles to centimeters for some reason. And we're going to start with our given number, which is the 30 miles. And then I want to get rid of miles. So I put it down here. I don't really know very much about miles. I know it's like 5,000 some odd feet, but going to feet is not going to help me. I want to get to centimeters, so I want to switch to metric. So I'm going to switch it to kilometers because I have a conversion factor for that. The conversion factor is 1.6 kilometers equals 1 mile. And you might be tempted to enter something on your computer or your calculator right now. Don't bother. We're not done yet. We're not going to put anything into our calculator until we are two centimeters. So I'm going to get rid of my miles now. And I'm left with kilometers. Now I want to get rid of kilometers. To make the kilometers cancel out, I'm going to put kilometers on the bottom of my next factor. And I don't know a lot about kilometers, you know, they're a big distance, kind of like a mile. But I know the prefix kilo means that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So I've gotten rid of my kilometers, and now I've got meters, though, which is not quite what I want. I want centimeters, but I know there's 100 centimeters in a meter because I've seen a meter stick before. So I can get rid of the meters, switch it to centimeters. I know there's 100 centimeters in one meter. And then I'm just going to punch this in my calculator. When you have a great big factor label problem like this, what I always do is I just multiply by everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can just multiply straight across the top and write that number down. Multiply straight across the bottom and write that number down and then divide the two. In this case, everything on the bottom is a 1, so it doesn't really make much difference. So this is going to be 30 times 1.6 times 1,000 times 100. Hmm, 4,800,000. But we're only supposed to have three sig figs in our answer. I'm going to switch to scientific notation. And that'll take care of that. You guys, I think this will be enough to get you started so you can follow the other harder video. Uh, let me know if you're having any trouble with it.